The BMW M5, the top sports version of the new generation of the 5 Series. In general, the all-new generation of the 5 Series is characterized by this even wider double kidney and a transition to the headlights. In the M5, of course, the front is even stronger, lower bumper, stronger, bigger air intakes than the black vertical fins. And here, they yeah, don't have this closing mechanism for better wind efficiency because this engine here always needs the full cooling, so the the kidney is always open and the headlights always come with the full LED technology there. Optional then you can also get the adaptive LED also for the high beam. 4 meters 94 or 16 foot 2 is the total length of the BMW M5, only available as a sedan and has this typical classic rather conservative sedan shape but of course a lot of forward moving sporty elements. For example here the M5 badge, then standard would be 19 inch rims, those ones here are the optional 20 inch in the black shade, also bigger brake discs in general. Optionally you can then go for the ones we have equipped here, the ceramic brakes, they save about 23 kilograms of weight. In the rear we can see that there's a small, just a very small wing here, small wing lip rather conservative how the tailors are designed and overall pretty classical and then of course the strong sports element four pipes here for the exhaust and those ones are real not fake and the black diffuser <laughs> it's a 4.4 liter v8 bi turbo 600 horsepower and 770 newton meters of torque and the acceleration figures are 3.4 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour and 11.1 seconds to 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles per hour the latter figure is more like the most vehicles would take to 100 so of course abundance of power The seat form is, although it's sporty, very comfortable. In general, the BMW 5 Series is basically, you know, a well 
comfort being, I would say so, because you sit down and uh, immediately relax. And headroom wise, I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1, still a lot of headroom left. Look at this symmetry, by the way, I think it's a nice design feature. Well, the screen on the one hand looks popped up, but then if you look at the lower part, this one here and here, so this one basically forms one visual unit. Then this carbon fiber style here for the decor elements. Everything is wrapped tightly, also with the surface right there. From this perspective, you can also see how asymmetric the steering wheel is, that the upper part is really thick. The climate unit is really interesting. You still have normal climate knobs. But then you have this screen here and if it's flickering in any way it's not in real life by the way so let's look over to the instruments they are somewhat 3d and real this part quite neat design but on the inside it's all digital then when you change for example the driving modes you will also see that there by the way there's also a rear differential lock available than in the two-wheel drive mode and you can also see some more modes here because you can change the throttle input how sporty you want to have you can change the adaptive suspension how comfortable or sporty you want to have it and also the steering characteristic so all individually to choose you can slide this nice cover open then you have the inductive charging port for smartphones or here the key is at the moment charging this special m shifting stick you can go to reverse like this or to the d mode to the right side or manual like this but you can also use the shifting pedals of course and the top part here really strange at the first side what is that well this is here to change the shifting speed in three levels although we have those sport seats well this is the knee room you got I mean, it's a long car, so sometimes this result we have in way smaller cars. So there is enough room for tall adults here in the rear. Also headroom wise, like this. However, it's not the best package. There are cars that offer more leg room considering the length or even if they are shorter. Here we go. Of course, a sedan is always somewhat limited. Here in the side parts, you have some smaller storage space for example cabin trolley to display how long the trunk actually is so you can store a lot of stuff still although of course the opening is somewhat limited and here in the top part you can release the rear seats and here then you have to go around to flip those like this the ski hatch can be flipped separately if you want so. So, and that's the setup you have here. So you can also load through longer things. Let's see what performance this car got. We will start in the normal modes. Everything activated. And I can tell you, already then, the M5 is a real beast. So very natural driving feeling. Look at how smooth the steering wheel reacts to my commands. Also what's happening then on the road. And of course listen to the sound. 150 kilometers now, now 170. So next corner is a left long here in the estuary circuit also used to be a Formula 1 circuit in the past. Here we go. Wow. What a handling. And I mean, it's still a relatively heavy car. But of course, the great handling makes up for it. And of course, the sporty suspension, hardly any tilting at all. That is very well to control. And we can even put that to the to the third level. Now the gears are turned up way higher. There we go. 7,000 RPM and that's the way for the racetrack. So see how much difference that does. Now the 
brakes, wow, those carbon ceramic brakes, they never change their habits. They always stay strong the same way. So the suspension is of course stiffer and sports oriented. Um, as long as you don't have big bumps on the road, it's still fairly comfortable to drive. So they didn't exaggerate it and this adaptive suspension of course also reacts on the situation and you can also tune it as we've shown you to a comfort or more sporty level. Steering wise, when you start in normal comfort mode, it's also really easy to steer. You don't need too much power. So you can still drive this car very relaxed. If you're also in a normal driving mode, you hardly hear anything from the engine, just cruising, really rather comfortable. The overview, by the way, is for a big sedan, not too bad as the mirror is quite big. Also the side mirrors, which have this design function, work pretty normally. And to the rear, of course, you know, they have the sedan back, but the visibility also to the sides with, due to this rather classic build is still somewhat okay. Um, well, the all-wheel drive, do you feel a big difference then to a normal rear-wheel drive? Well, when we are on dry roads here, most of the power is directed to the rear wheels anyway, so you wouldn't feel a big difference. The big difference really when there's slippery conditions. We can also test this M dynamic mode here on the streets. And you can't feel any difference right there yet. So that is more on the racetrack or on rainy conditions. Let's see if I shift down. I feel a little bit that the front wheels are pulling just a little bit, but still this car has still the pure M dynamic riding experience. So. And now to our conclusion for the BMW M5. Well, what a day. The car is still cooling down behind me after our hot laps on the racetrack. Well, exterior wise, I think they have not overdone it. It has a sporty stance, still a lot of classic elements for sure. But I think it is in a way that you can still drive it in everyday driving life without you know having this huge wing or something like that in the rear. Then the interior with a great build quality. The seats are for long-term comfort, I think a little bit too stiff. However, they give you more side support than on sporty maneuvers. And of course, for a real sporty ride, they should also use different materials. The offering of room inside, you know, for the everyday driving capabilities, you have enough room for the four adults in there. No question, also enough room for luggage. But of course, this upper mid-size sedan class is not really famous for the best package. That's also not the main focus of this vehicle. Driving performance, well, I mean, that's just wow, basically. It's so aggressive. It's really a beast, this vehicle. And you have this new all-wheel drive mode, and I think that's actually a good decision if you really experience it at the, as a customer, because in your normal driving situations, you won't be able to use drifts and stuff. And then you're a little bit safer than with the all-wheel drive because it has so much power. And you know, I've driven a couple of hundred cars and also on really a lot of racetracks all over the world. And I must say this one here in the pure rear-wheel drive mode was actually one of the hardest to control because it's really a beast. And um, when I then think about that maybe some people buy the car that have even less experience, I think this is also the reason why they went for this four-wheel drive solution because it can also be very dangerous, this vehicle. You have to bear that in mind. So if you buy one of those vehicles, I can just advise you, take some of the driving instructor lessons and you know BMW M also is offering that. They have special programs and a lot of people are actually using that and then you know also use it for meet up and chat and it's really good experience to have fun both and have another security or safety experience, which then also helps you to drive the car in your everyday life. So we look forward to your feedback. Are you maybe also a BMW M or especially a BMW M5 customer? Then share your experience in our comment section. We'll be really looking forward to that. And if you ask yourself, well, M5 or maybe just a step back for the 550i, then I can also say the 550i 
of course you save a lot of money. So the base model 45,000 M550i is about 80,000. This one here 120 base as we saw it here today with a lot of extra 150,000 even. That's of course really expensive. So the better price performance here is of course the 550, 550i, <laughs> a little bit complicated. And of course it offers you a little bit more, you know, calmness also in everyday driving life. Although abundance of power and just about a second slower to the 100 splint. So the thoughts about that because you had those questions earlier today. And of course, now the car is finished with cooling down. I will cool down now myself and I'll see you at our very next episode. Thank you so much for watching.